All right, let's go to the NL um, winners, wild cards, starting with the East. NL East, what do we I'm going to take this one first. I got the Nationals winning the NL East, but I will say... I'm very surprised. ...that this is far from a perfect squad, and I think that the World Series predictions for this team are a bit much right now. I know Sports Illustrated picked them over the Yankees to win the World Series, which basically guarantees they will not win the World Series, but look, Bryce Hopper's in a contract year. That's something you, you can bank on. You said that with the most Boston accent Yo, ever. Bryce yeah. Hopper's in it. <laughs> kind of like you said Hopper. Ah, uh, Bryce right. Hopper. Yeah. I said, when you say Harper and then contract after, you get Hopper. Anyway, so Bryce Hopper is in a contract year. That's going to be insane. Not much you can bank on. But look, Daniel Murphy's coming off offseason knee surgery. He's not going to be ready. Ryan Zimmerman had a year that honestly came out of nowhere. <laughs> And Yo, big time ad on the way on the fantasy wire. Yeah, like he wasn't even April. he wasn't even drafted in nah, fantasy league. Not even a thought to be drafted. He, the last time he was an all star was 09. and he was seventeen, and he's batting over three hundred with over thirty home runs, over hundred RBIs. Can you can you count on that again? I don't know if you can. Um, a lot of players of them overperformed him, Rendon, Taylor. Well, I, I like Rendon. I think Rendon's one of the more underrated players in the league. He's he's one of the reasons. Him, him Trey Turner. Those two guys are some of the reasons why I still I still think the Nationals have enough to win this division and to and to go into the to playoffs and their their rotation solid. Sir, uh, obviously Scherzer and and Strasburg are the premier one two punch in the National League but, as of right now. Well, the, so another team's gonna have uh, something to say about that I think. And Gio Gonzalez, Tanner Roque, Joe Ross, those that's a solid three four five. So. I'm just I'm worried about the bullpen. Ryan Madsen and Sean Doolittle aren't exactly scaring you at the end of the bullpen. Um, I think this team's going to be good enough to make the playoffs and win the division. But I'm I don't I, pump the brakes on all the World Series talks for this squad. Yeah, I got the Nats with ease. Like Tim said, that their rotation is is pretty deep, one to five. They've always had that bullpen issue that they always seem to try to address. You know, at the deadline or whenever they can. And they tried Melanson a couple years ago. They had him for half a year. He walked to the Giants. So. They're going with, I guess, the Doolittle Madsen combo, which was worked was working in Oakland for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now it's you know, Oakland's Oakland, but when you come to a, a a World Series type contender in the Nationals, you gotta be on your game. So I think they'll be okay. But I also like the addition of Adam Eaton, who went out early last year, who they traded for Giolito, like Tim said earlier, about the White Sox. Um, him at top of the lineup is going to be huge. I think he scores 100 runs this year. I drafted him in my fantasy league. I like he he can get on and steal bases for you. And he's a, you know, he's a like a 300 type hitter. And if you can get that guy on, you know, at a 300 type pace or average, they're gonna have problems with the guys behind them. He's gonna get on, cause problems for pitchers running. Um, I think they're gonna score a ton of runs this year. So I think the the Nats run away with this division with ease. Mm. Yeah, I'm with the Nationals too. You guys pretty much hit on that. I want to talk about the Mets though, because I got know. the Mets in my wild card too. I do as well. It hurt me to do that, but I, I it was like between them. And I had him, I had him between them and the crew, the Brew Crew, but I I, I won't match. They have the better rotation than the crew. Yeah, but m my biggest issue with them is the same same shit with them every year. Are they going to be healthy? And you look, you know, we had this argument with MP before we started recording. How in 2015 everyone was healthy, they went to the World Series. Fair, but 2014 someone went down. 2016, 17, like there's always an issue with them. So I'm factoring in. Unfortunately, someone's going to go down because that's just a thing. Now. Tim did bring up a good point how he thinks that one of the best offseason moves was not a player being brought in or a, a coach. It, it was a trainer leaving. Ray Ramirez, a.k.a. Rat Ramirez in the Mets group chat that I'm in. <laughs> Look, he, he was he was trying to get these guys to be beach body models. That's that's why that's how you tear your lat if you're Noah Syndergaard. That's how you pull your hamstring if you're Jonas Cespedes. This is not rocket science. This is basic human. And... We have someone now who you know understands basic human movement, and that you don't need to be benching fucking three fifty if you're a starting pitcher. Get the TB twelve method in there, man. They'll be fine. That's what I'm saying. Yo, look, Tom Brady is not gonna is not gonna wow anyone when he takes his shirt off on the beach, but he's one of the better athletes in the world because he his movement is the key. It is all about movement. It's all mm. about movement. Uh, yeah. Going off what you said last year, Noah Syndergaard, Yoenis Cespedes, and Jairus Familia, all three hurt for a long time if you got your best hitter your best pitcher and your closer out you're not going to contend that's any team in the league can't can't make up for that kind of loss on top of that steven matt seth lugo tj rivera the list goes on and on and who who was hurt last year who wasn't hurt is is the real thing but if you go past that and you assume that they might be hurt they had todd frazier who 
brings on base percentage and power. Uh, that's that's the team right now with the Mets. Also, the Mets are going on base and power. He's one of those dope locker room guys that everyone raves about. That we that we really missed as well in 2015. Uh, we had a, we had Curtis Granderson who was that locker room presence, and Daniel Murphy. And what about Kadir too? Was and Kedire my, yeah, and nothing? Michael Kadir with the belt. Yeah, and I mean Daniel Murphy was really that guy. So if he can take over for Todd Frazier, Todd Frazier could take over for that and be that guy. Jay Bruce. Adrian Gonzalez at first base. A lot of people forget about Adrian Gonzalez. Come on, son. Yo, listen. Yeah. It's 2018. Listen. That's fact. A lot of people forget about Adrian Gonzalez, but he had a pretty good year before he decided to go loco, right? But also... He also you, can't stay healthy, though. That's true. But I, I don't think he's he's there for long. I think Jay I mean, Bruce goes to first base. Place. You think so? Yeah. And I, I was going to say Dom Smith, like, nah. May or June. I think Bruce goes to first base. I think Brandon Nimmo... I think Brandon Nimmo is going to be a, lot of, a surprise for a lot of people. This is a prospect that the Mets did not trade straight up for Andrew McCutcheon. That was the deal. Mm. Nemo, Nemo for McCutcheon, and they didn't trade him. He's been having a great spring, uh, and the Mets are super high in him. He's going to be starting in place of Michael Conforto before Michael Conforto comes back, and I think he's going to earn his way onto an everyday spot in that rotation. On top of that, Anthony Swarzak, A.J. Ramos in the back of the bullpen, or a huge address, a huge need addressed, that bridge to Familia. And then finally, Ahmed Rosario. A lot of people forget, number two pro- uh, prospect in baseball. Not only can he hit, he brings a lot of defensive prowess to that position where we had an old man there last year who couldn't move. So that was a big reason for a lot of this, uh, a lot of the the runs that came in. So I think the Mets a lot of a lot of improvements all around, and if they stay healthy, it, it's hard to beat a one-two punch like Noah and Degrom, and then followed by Mats, and then followed by Seth Lugo, and then followed by Harvey if he if he comes back. So I like the Mets, I, and I know I'm a Mets fan, so. You know, take that with a grain of salt, but I, uh, looking at them as as clear as I can, I like the roster. I like the mess, too. I like that Zach Wheeler didn't make the team, too. Mm-hmm. He got demoted. Yeah, I kind of like that. Like, you know, you have to earn your spot back. You know, he hasn't been around the last two years, it feels like. So, you know, they do have depth there if they need it. Is Gazelman still with the Mets? Uh, he Robert is. Gazelman? He is, but it's Seth Lugo looks like no, he's going to be I'm just He is, yeah, but yeah. Seth Lugo made the rotation, but Gazelman and, and Wheeler aren't bad. Depth options. Agreed. You know what I'm saying? Because you ultimately do, they will come into play at some point. That's just baseball. Yeah. Um, but I like the move they made last year to get AJ Ramos, who, if Familia does go down, he has closer experience. Blake Swarzak, one of the most underlooked moves of the offseason. When I talked about, you know, those for Rodney and Addison Reed being, you know, second tier, he's right up there with them, I think, in second tier relievers. So that was a good get. And um, yeah, I mean, Frazier shores up the infield in terms of glove. Like you said, Ahmed Rosario, so that whole left side is pretty much taken care of. If Esdrubal Cabrera and Adrian Gonzalez can move on that right side, they'll have a you know a pretty good infield, you know, in terms of defensively. Yeah. Um, the bats, I just think like it's it's a health thing. Bringing back Jay Bruce is nice. He's comfortable with the Mets already, so he he wanted to come back. So I was yeah. you know him and Cespedes in the middle of that lineup. Those, that's a solid one-two combination if they if they can stay healthy. I kind of like what the Mets have going. Um, I just think their pitching, like I said, ultimately made me put them over the Brew Crew into the playoffs. So I mean I, I'm not too high on them, but I think they'll sneak in as a wild card too. Since 2011, 30 home run seasons. Goldschmidt three, Stanton four, Cabrera four, Nelson Cruz four. Jay Bruce five, one of the most underappreciated home run bats in the game. It's because he hits like two sixty, but he's he's solid. That's, but you guys, he's entering say, his the, prime now. He's the, only thirty the, years old. Yeah, but also the one thing I always say about the batting average, you guys say that the new era of baseball not nah, is. is guys Strike are batting two fifty but hitting forty home runs, and you take that. It's about on base percentage these days. Yeah, and that's what Frazier brings. Jay Bruce is like the the, the prototypical like best player in Texas kind of kid. Got drafted number one overall, I think. If I'm not mistaken, or in the first round, top prospect came up, hit a lot of home runs, has a big contract. This guy lived the life of like a, the perfect baseball life. Except he lived it in Cincinnati with the Reds. Yeah, except except that. But except they, the winning but they part. They were all right though. They were. They, <laughs> they did were, have a couple yeah, of playoff yeah. appearances. Yeah, they were good back in the day. Uh, so what about the NL Central? Hold on, hold on. Before we get to that, just real quick, yes. I think the Phillies are have a chance to make some noise this year as well. On on the back of Aaron Nola, Carlos Santana is a great veteran presence. He's gonna help a guy like Reese Hopkins, uh, Hoskins, excuse me, who who can have that. They love J.P. Crawford, their young shortstop. Um, Jake Arrieta, you add that to the mix. I think the Phillies are gonna be respectable. I think they've jumped the Marlins and the Braves in terms of. Uh, For sure, I mean the Marlins. Of, it doesn't take much, to right? Jump. But I that, mean, that's a shit show down there. You know what, the, man? The Marlins had so much potential last year. 
They traded away their entire outfield. They, they had the was, best outfield they, in baseball, yeah. in my opinion. Crazy. Yelich, Ozuna, and Stan. It's tough to find a better outfield than that. And now they're all gone. And now they're all gonna. And now they're all gonna do things for the next uh, division. We're talking about the NL Central. Oh my.